Hey, welcome back to the garage. Working on the 67 Dart again. Part of the project is changing over to front disc brakes, and part of that is putting in this proportioning valve. While I'm at it, I'm going to do this cheap uh, Amazon line lock as well. So both of these need to get locked in to some lines that come out of here. Question is, where do you put them and how do you put them there? I'm thinking this big space right here would be perfect. Get them mounted somehow in here. That way I can run the hard lines from here over and then out of that back down to the proportioning valve down there. So let's go see, do some drawing, see what we can come up with. Before we can design the bracket, we actually have to design or at least CAD up these components. We need to know where the holes are, where the lines go in, things like that, so that we know exactly where the what the size of the bracket needs to be isn't going to interfere with any of the pieces here. So I've done this proportioning valve, I also did this line lock. If there's any interest in how you actually go about designing these in Fusion 360, just leave a comment down below and I can maybe put together a video on how to do the actual CAD drawings. Once we have both components pulled into a project, we can then work on the bracket. You can see here we've got to have the master cylinder come in here, then out to the brakes here. We'll plug this one and plug this one, and then over on the proportioning valve, we got to make sure that it's going to sit kind of like this, the hood's above here. And so, since this is going to be plugged, we've got the line can come out there, and we're not going to have anything that hits. And then the line in here, we've got no problem. So what we really need is a bracket that kind of comes straight down between here, and then there will be some sort of a stand at the bottom, and then a little shelf that comes out under here that has a space for these holes to screw down to. That should be a good idea at least. Let's uh, let's start drawing this. Let's head out in the garage, see if we can make this. Got a whole bunch of this aluminum plate here in the garage, so let's use it for building this bracket. So I think I cut it out, drill the five holes, and then bend it. Then we'll cut this tab and weld it on. It's going to weld right here. So now we need to make a little shelf that allows this to sit somewhere about like that. So it runs across here. Instead of cutting another piece off that flat, 
I've got some, you know, flat bar here that I can just use. I can probably cut a piece about the same length here, just weld it on like that. Right, to weld this guy on, I've just clamped it to a chunk of bar, and then squared it up here. Just run a bead here, and then I can take the clamp off and finish it. Before I show you this amazing piece of work, there are a few things I want to point out. One is, I'm not a welder. So before everybody runs down to the comments and talks about how my welds look terrible, I have eyes, I know they look terrible. Second, all the welding that I've done, I've taught myself, I only weld maybe a, a once a month-ish, and aluminum, even less than that. So, what I do learn, I tend to forget between sessions. Behold. Yeah, I screwed this one up huge. I mean, it's, it's awful. Now, it took me a while to figure out what the heck was going on, why I was having such problems. And it... And I'm, not, I'm still not 100% certain why, but I have a theory. When I was welding this, I had this guy clamped on here, right? And I had it clamped to the table. But what was happening was because it was on, say, here like this, heat was sinking from here into this bar. So this was not heating up very well, and then this piece was heating up really hot. So, if I turned the heat down so that it wouldn't, you know, so that it wouldn't burn through here, it never got even hot enough to heat this up. And if it was hot enough to melt this, then it was just blowing through other parts. And so, I had, you know, all sorts of sags and blow through. And then after I did that, you know, I started just trying to test out. So, a lot of this is just testing, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So... That was a revision one, which is obviously just scrap. Went back, cut new pieces, and made a second one. Again, the welds are not beautiful, but that'll at least hold, right? So it looks not near as ugly as the first. This is at least functional. And most of that, you know, since it mounts like this, you won't really see that. These are going to get covered by the proportioning valve. And remember, it's only for me. Good enough. So if it's in like this, three of the lines point toward the engine bay. So I think that's going to be the easiest, least amount of bends. This one will either come out this way or out and around. For these, I'm just going to use these stainless steel cap screws and stainless steel nylocks. Now we just have to run some lines, bleed the brakes. An important thing to note here, both this proportioning valve and the roll control. These ports are not designed for flare fittings. So a flare fitting has a seat like that. You see how it's got a cone that pushes out toward us? Matches this inverted flare here. So that flare goes in and it tightens down and that's what gets you a nice seal. If you take a look at these fittings, It does not have that. That seat goes down, not up. So that will not work. You can't just put a, a line in there, tighten it down. It'll leak all over. So you need fittings like this. I've got two of them. I don't know if they came with the proportioning valve or the, the roll control, but 
I need to, uh, two more. Then don't forget, you need to plug down below and up above, and then these are the two ports I'm going to use. I've done a previous video on how to make brake lines, and I'll put the link probably right up here for it. But there are a few things to know as well. When you're buying bulk brake line, there are a few different types of materials you can get. You can get stainless steel, which I really like, but it's really hard. It's not easy to work with, and the tools required to get the leverage you need are fairly expensive. So if you're just doing a one-off, stainless is really hard to deal with, and if you don't have access to the tools, I would actually avoid it. The next one down from this is just standard steel. You can use that as well. It's also hard, not as hard to work with as uh, stainless, but fairly difficult. It's also this stuff here. This has got a, it's a, got some copper or something in it. I don't know if you can see the color difference here. Let's see if I can get it to focus, damn it. But you can see it's got a little bit of a, like almost a reddish goldish color to it. At any rate, this stuff is really, really easy to work by hand. I mean, it's really soft. To, to get these bends, I just went around a piece of PVC for this. But a pair of these bending pliers is really more than all you'll need to do it. If you just take your time when you're doing your bends, you can do all of this by hand. And I think these flares can probably be done with the inexpensive just hand clamp and screw type. I'll put a link to those down in the description as well, and to all of this. But really, that's what you need to know when you're doing this. If you don't have the tools or access to the tools, something like this material is much easier to use. One other note, this loop here, the reason for this is because this is attached to, it's actually going to be attached here, the other end on this one is going to be attached down to the uh, proportioning valve or the distribution block down there. From the motor running, the car driving, there's a lot of vibration on these and because they're not clamped to anything, they're kind of hanging free, they rattle around a bunch. This helps absorb some of that and prevents them from stress cracking. You'll notice the new ones, in fact, the ones that you take off that come from the or from the master cylinder down, those will have a loop in them. New ones have a loop in them, and that's what it's for. It's to absorb some of that vibration and help keep them from stress cracking. So always put loops like this in a free-hanging hydraulic line like this. It feels like I keep having final notes here. So, another final note. Maybe not the final final, but uh, another note. The kit did not come with fittings that go into the master cylinder, at least not that I can find anywhere. And if they did, they would have to be adapters to go from the lines that are on there to these new ones. So This is the nut that came from the original master cylinder, the manual drums. And this is the one that needs to go into the rear. You can see they're not the same size. The kit may have come with an adapter to take this line to go in. So if you're not replacing the lines, be aware that uh, you either need an adapter if the kit doesn't come with one, or you're going to have to modify stuff. Here I've got two of them done. This is the full rear setup comes out of the master cylinder, into here, out of the proportioning valve, then down to the factory proportioning valve, or the factory, again, that's really just a distribution block. I don't think it does much proportioning. You can see how it comes along. So this is what it's going to look like. Good luck with your project. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching.